silly. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to episode 262. And today we are featuring three guests who just <clears throat> all together just conducted a seminar here in uh, Middletown. I'm on my shirts. Bikes in Middletown. So we have Dr. Tim Hartman. We got PG Guy. And we got Master Frank Schakowsky, who owns a school here. And we're going to be kind of just talking about how they came about doing this seminar, their different styles, what they focused on, and all that. So I think it's going to be refreshing for the community to hear how people in the same system could come together and teach. And I, what, and I think that would behoove of many styles to do that. And that, I just think it's just going to help create unity all that. And I'm actually hoping that happens in the KI world very soon. So without further ado, we're going to jump into this. And so how did you guys, um, obviously there was some planning coordination in this. Uh, how long were you guys uh, kind of playing this and working it out? Like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, after I appeared on your show, I think that kind of got us talking. And it just sort of unfolded. Well, first of all, it started in 91. I came onto the seminar and met this guy. So Eric Alexander, which was his instructor, posted me out to, to show him. Modern East, try to get it as uh, untainted as possible because Modern East as a whole is usually the art within your art. They wanted to get like a clean sample so they can do their own blending and choose. And then uh, Eric moved to Colorado, so he continued on his own, on his martial quest. Eric met this guy, started him in Modern East, and then I went to the Texas, the Dallas camps, or Houston. Rice University, and I met that guy, and then uh, everyone disappears. We reconnect, we start the podcast, and I said, Hey, Frank, how'd you like to be on the show? And then we we're just like reminiscing about you know how we're all family, you know, because Eric is the catalyst or is the uh, is that glue that brings all three of us together. I'm like, you know, we should do something together, but somewhere in there, too, I, I, I was in the area at a, another event, you know, of, and Looked him up, and we had a, a nice visit, and caught up, and, and reminisced about Eric, and, and did that half of it too. But it all happened yeah. together. And then the interview happened after that. Yeah. And at, as we're doing the, uh, we usually <clears throat> we do a little debrief afterwards. We yeah. shut the thing off. Or just, I don't go, hey, what do you guys think about this? And it just, you know, good. it didn't. I mean, it was more than thirty seconds, probably <laughs> thirty-five. You know, um, just you know, try to figure out the logistics and go, hey, what do you want to do? Where do you want to do? Yeah. Um, this came. This this. This was a nail biter because of the weather. But even with the way the weather is, I, I was very pleased because I expected two or three people to be here after the quantity of weather that I drove through to get here. And uh, it, it came off an hour. I mean, we had, we had, some people had to leave early. Yeah. You know, some people got here late. Uh, we did a five hour workshop, which is probably too long these days. <laughs> yeah. And uh, everyone hung in and we were fine. <laughs> you guys are fine yeah you know it's funny i think more and more people are gravitating to doing um you know, like on the three hours and yeah. all that like, you know, but you know but hey you guys made it work five hours and you each gave each other time to yeah. come on there and do it so post show when you had Marshall frank on you guys kind of said hey what if we kind of do a seminar together that kind of how it, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we did, actually. I think what happened is uh, we did the debrief uh, with all of our guests. We do just you know, so we'll shut the thing off and then we'll like, well, I'm going to take you off screen and when we're done with the show. Just wait for a minute, I'll bring you back on because mm. so we stopped broadcasting. We talked for a while and we had a good gel. And then, uh, then and usually, yeah, most of the shows we're ending around 10, 11 o'clock, and then Ty and I are on the, either on using StreamYard or our Facebook Messenger. So like one or two in the morning. So I actually do the show out of my house now, which is so much better. Yeah. Um, but we end up talking about so much other stuff too, because we'll say, hey, uh, I'll say about this and the disarm. We're explaining it this way instead, you know, for, for when we talk shop amongst our other stuff. Or like, but, you know, we'll talk about maybe 10, 15 minutes about the show. And, you know, hey, this person, whoever that happens to be, open up some information that actually why and Z or talk to this person and, mm. and uh, Ty and I said well he met him face to face we had met years ago 
everyone, all three of us had a good gel with each other. So hey, well, why don't we proceed to do this? So we started a, a tech a message group in Facebook for the three of us. It really took very little time to work this out. You know, it was pretty simple. It's like, here, this is what we're going to do. This is, you know, we, we talked from the material and as well as the business and everything was on paper or, or electronic paper. And then when it came time to come out here, we reviewed everything once again. Okay, this is what we wrote here. Are we all we all good with that? Yep. Just to remind everyone to make sure we're on the same page. You know, and the big thing, the, the hardest thing that we had to talk about was not money. It was about how do you want to approach this. And you know, even that was like, well, we don't know. We never know who's going to be here. Right. 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 You never know. Yep. And we decided that we were going to start off. I did a warm up with the Sinali. Um, I brought my, I had my UE Boom Megas going, we had music playing, and we started jamming, and then I said, all right, and I got done, I did like maybe one technique, I think, or maybe I just operated and, and I gave it to you, oh, we did the footwork, that's right, this is my footwork, and then I tagged you in, and then you tagged Frank in, and then I came back in, and then tied in, and Frank finished off the whole day, and um, it, it worked out well, we took breaks, you know, and I think it was a good gel, and everyone, uh, Everyone had some FMA experience in the room, which has made it even better. <laughs> that was a thing. Oh, well, wow. and we gelled off each other too, like you would want to see, right? I think that, you know, if he started with one thing, I used that to go into what I was going to cover, and I think mm. the same thing happened. Uh, I mean, I, I agree, right? Yeah, so I, I, I prefer that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what was our theme today? So, you know, we have some common themes. You know, we, of course, had the same instructor. Um, right. We've both been in a long time, we both right from the founder. I think we all just love to teach seminars. I mean, I know it's people for you, but I get to see what you do. And we just have a love for the art and a love to, to share what we learn. So when you say single sinolali that you guys kind of use as the baseline and branch off that for what you would give the students, maybe for the folks who don't know. So when you say single sinolali, you got the you got the best view of the camera. Why don't you demonstrate? <laughs> okay, the sinolis are the sticks going back and forth. Right. So a lot of you guys could do it. Yeah, if you want to show just in the air. Sure, sure. Yeah. So I mean, so for single sinolis, the standard one is just high, low, same stick, and then same thing other side. High, low, high, low. One, two, one, two. Uh, and there's a bunch of other versions, but that's the baseline. Like a high five and a low five, exactly. or yeah. inward block and downward block. If you're, you know, with relating it. Actually, I taught that today. We talked about this. Yeah. Like, if you're working with someone from a traditional background who's never done Filipino martial arts, the thing that was very good about what Professor Price did for us, because he had exposure to that, he used traditional examples to teach people modern techniques. So I would say, all right, listen, inward block, downward block, inward block, yep. downward block, high five, low five, high five, low five. Oh, look, reference point, wrist lock, grab, control. Yep. So this Sinwali, this particular stick Sinwali, was a big theme of what we did. We that was the chassis of what we built off that we built off of today. Okay, so you guys kind of was that kind of the plan coming into here? Yeah, that's no. nice. Sort of, <laughs> kind of sort of, sort of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of like you know, actually, our approach was kind of like how Canada came up with its name. You know how Canada got its name? No, I don't. They put a bunch of letters in a hat. <laughs> they pulled the, so whatever they pull out the letters, it says it's. it's Country's name to go C A N A D A Canada, and that was kind of how we figured this out. Hey, yeah, but so we true, had a, not true story. Sat down, had a nice dinner, and just visited and caught up, which was good. And then talked about you know, and, and originally we settled sort of on sticking to the wall as a as a starting point, and then it lasted the whole day. But it wasn't just that. There was a lot of there was joint locks, there was drills, there was mm. power generation because you know that's what I do. And you kind of get a feel too for when you get here. You know, who do you have? Yep. You know, is it all advanced people at the dinner level? Yeah. You know, a wide variety. So you kind of also get a feel once you're here. So even though, that despite maybe having different levels in the room based on experience and ranking, what have you, single. What made you guys think, okay, single Wally will still be good and address this, even despite the difference we may have as far as student levels. I mean, well, okay, so I, I personally, the way I look at things, since they're not my students, they're all white belts to me. <laughs> Using a belting system, which, or beginners, you know, I, I, the, the nice thing about Professor, when he'd go to a room, most likely no one in the room ever trained with him. And people are saying, oh, look, he taught white belts all the way to these master level people, kept them all together. 
I've done the same because I've learned from the master, the grandmaster. And people, and like going over to Saratoga Martial Arts Festival and other people say the same thing. I'm like, I go, I'm doing what my teacher did. What? He goes, you know what professor told me? No. He goes, they're all white belts. No, they're not. He goes, in modern or they are. Right. Oh, they don't know what we're teaching, so they're all on the same playing field. So the nice thing is Singleson Wally is not a complex. Actually, I don't think anything we do is complex. I think uh, our, our advanced material to me are just sophisticated basics. I mean, it's just putting more things together, putting more of the building blocks together. It's still the same building blocks. Yeah. Yeah, I've taught some of them like to so many different groups. Some of them give just basic self-defense, and I've never had a problem teaching it. You know, within minutes, they have the basic pattern down. Even people that have no athletic background, no martial art background, it seems to be just a really simple pattern that you can get pretty quickly. Very accessible chassis, and then you can build yeah. or explore whatever you want on top of that. Well, like, here's an example for, oh, so if any of you out there, I mean, this is obviously geared primarily for Filipino martial arts. We, we, we know that's our, that's the, the core of our clientele or your clientele on this show. So if you're if you've been brought in to teach at a karate school, kung fu school, fill in the blank school, non FMA school, you want to look at things that they would know. Now if you're if you're going to sit there and say say you do this in Wally but you call it something different, an easy thing to remember is just look what they do. Here's this block. Here's that block. Yeah, pretty clever. How many would okay. like? Yeah. And then when we get the hands fixed, uh, here's what I did in my, during my session. Uh, kid had. Uh, Added sticks. So I went up with him. I traded one stick. So we both put the padded stick in our right hand and the rattan in our left. So it's padded, padded, rattan, rattan. Because a lot of times people get their, oh, their yeah. hands confused. So there's a whole art form on teaching. But to me, it's second nature because I learned from I learned from the master. Right, right. And he did this from day one. So for me, it was the norm. If I came up a different way and it wasn't taught that way, I could see how that would be like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we got some folks show. All right, folks, as if you were watching, tell us where you're watching from and smash that like button. We got a dragon, my, my man from overseas. We got Kara. And her, <laughs> she was still. <laughs> Are you in the parking lot, Kara? Yeah, we miss you, Kara. That's funny. <laughs> she, did, she did say she has been watching on the way home. So. <laughs> and then Nathan. What was Nathan saying about me? Oh yeah, Nathan. I told about your drinking game. Every okay, okay. If Nathan, if you're done working, it's game on. So every time you were to say K, K, K I or Cali Lestrisco, Nathan needs to take a shot. Nathan. You better hope to God you're not working right now, because I'm going to say it. Here we go. Nathan. Oh, I know you got to say it. You got to say it. Yeah. Say it. What were we talking about earlier today? We covered some stuff. Well, what's the system you like training? Exactly. What's, that <laughs> what's that shirt from? L L A. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, what are you doing? Are you saying that? <laughs> just, yeah, nice. I'm just saying, Colin, it was just about five times and I have to take five shots. <clears throat> yeah, we got Emmanuel from France. Good guy. All right, folks, if you got questions, drop them in. We just kind of got started. Uh, these three, if you're just jumping in, agreed to get together and teach a seminar together. It's not going to be a long show, so this yeah, is yeah. a short so, show. So, uh, your questions down. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and they base it off basically single cell model. So, uh, okay. Teaching styles, so I thought it would be neat to kind of cover you three in a room. Obviously, you guys brought different styles as well as you guys should, and I think that's what I was kind of really wanting to focus on today, as well as like what would, what did you use for you know as a baseline as far as material, despite who was going to be in the room. So as far as like, um, what would you, Frank? What would you categorize your style? Uh, one thing is I've been told is that um, I teach slow and methodical, and I guess there might be some truth to that. And here's one thing. I remember um, when I first saw a professor for the first time at a camp in Massachusetts, he kind of kept saying to me, oh, you must relax, you must go slow. And what I found over time is, I know why he said that, because most of the students I teach, especially beginners, they seem to be trying to rush it you know, really fast and they don't even have it yet. So I try to teach things slower and in order. By in order, I mean first the mechanical stage. Where do your feet go? Where do your hands go? How do you move your body? The second stage is smooth it out, smooth this emotion. And then the third stage is speed and power. A lot of times people sort of reverse that order. They're trying to go fast with power. They don't really actually have the mechanics yet. Uh, and then the final stage would be spontaneity, you know, doing all this, but, you know. But without thinking. Yeah, without thinking. It's coming out of reality. So I'd say that's kind of the, the steps I try to follow. Um, but that being said, I also tailor the art to the person. I don't try to force the person into the art. 
So some people teach better by listening, you know, so I'll be very clear in how I'm speaking. Some people really have to see it or they can't get it because some people have to feel it. Like a kid, I thought you have to take and make a fist for them so they feel the fist. And of course, most people learn a combination of the three. Yeah. So, so I'd say that's it. I kind of have that order that I try to teach in, um, but then also try to tailor it you know, to, the, to the person. Well said. Well, you teach it. <laughs> so it's funny, uh, as far as that stuff goes, uh, gosh, I, I've been teaching academics and all sorts of things forever. So the first thing I do is, is try to make people comfortable. And then I uh, let my enthusiasm flow <laughs> and just go from there. I saw that. Though. I uh, it's just you know pure enthusiasm. I love the art. I let that try to try to be uh, a little contagious. Uh, at the same time, um, I'm geeking out right in front of everybody and hopefully dragging them with me. So whether it's a small detail or a neat little tweak here or some things that I can put some levers on things. But like like I said, some people have to feel it, and I'm more than happy to, to show that. Um, but also explaining it, right? But that only goes so far. So I try to cut, hit all of the all of the ways, right? You can learn by feeling, doing, hearing, reading, all of those things. And there have been times I've used visual aids as well to write the stuff down and make diagrams. So I'll do whatever it takes to connect with people because without that connection, they're not going to learn. And they got to have fun, which is what Remy said a long time ago. Have fun. Uh, yeah, so it's not. Yeah, it's not fun to be tougher than learn, right? <laughs> How about you, Dad? Too. Well, I got a mixed, a mixed bag of things I do. I mean, one, I'm, I'm very much about getting certain facts right. You know, like where certain things came from, how it developed. Um, you know, sometimes I'm just hopping and doing things really quick, as in like, let's go. Other times, okay, now listen, this is a, a thing. There's some some drills. Like when we did the sim, the remedy, what, what Frank was doing was called the Simoli application drill. It's not an application drill. Really, it's a way well, we talked about earlier. It's a sin, single Sinwali seizing drill. So, professor, there was would, you'd be in front of him and you'd be spinning your sticks and swinging left and right, and you have this vortex of value of violence in front of him. And he would just look in, grab into that vortex, grab yeah. a piece of you, and drop you without getting hit. Yeah. And I and he would like him do the thing, and I would just. Ah! And they say, "No, I'm on the ground." <laughs> and um, and, and you know, um, and for those who remember Wally J, Wally J and him were best friends, and they would lock and control. Wally J was like Droopy Dog. You made me mad. <laughs> Remy, the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> blah, 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 just throw him. <laughs> and I'm usually the the, the the chew toy that Taz got done using. <laughs> so um, we would make some references about like, hey, like. Well, we're doing this patty yeah. cake thing. We're not fighting. It's a reference point. We're relating it to our Sinwali, the structure that we already have. So sometimes I'll get more into the details of that because there's a lot of, you know, because modern is the art within your art, and I did as a standalone program, there's a lot of things that were glossed over. Um, and going, and I've taken Ty with me a bunch of times to the Philippines, and we go get information. The latest thing, he actually brought something back to me from Texas. There's uh, an old friend of ours, Andy DeLeon, one of the first, uh, he was like a fourth degree from Remy in the Philippines that moved to the States. He's, he's shared things with me. He's taught at our camps. We were talking about the word tappy tappy and, the, and we couldn't find it. Well, he's like, oh no, it's tapik, tapik with a K, they dropped the K. And when we looked up tapik, tapik, it translates to padding or tapping. It's not, okay, now here's the thing. When you say tappy tappy, the motto, the motto, which is not the translation of the words, is counter the counter. So when Remy used tappy tappy, he was trying to show you how to counter and then counter those counters and counter those counters again. A lot of it actually is maybe a derivative or an influence from Lintelon. There's a lot of that in there. Um, Travis Hans Decadina, when you go back and forth, you're countering and he's countering and you're countering and he's countering. Sort of like if you have a traditional background, the endless back fist drill for the, for the fighters, they would do a back fist hit back. Theoretically, that is the counter to the counter. I mean, it's an attribute drill, but still. But he brought this information back. I wonder Tell why me. they came back. You know what? Okay, well, here's, here's a good one. Remy's videos were re-edited by the his children, and they couldn't even understand his own accent. Oh, So he, they say visidario with a V. As opposed to abisidario. Abisidario. Yeah. Abisidario. They, they did... They, they weren't used to their own father's accent. Huh. So, because it's, he goes, abecedario, you know, one, two, three, ABC, mm. abecedario. So, because that's, that's Savoano, and Remy 
spoke at least four or five different dialects, dialects. Ilongo, Visayan, Cebuano, Tagalog, English, and then whatever else he picked up. So, you know, you get this hodgepodge language mm -hmm. and a mixture of accents, but getting back to it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, sometimes I would take this approach of stopping, and we talked about some things today mm -hmm. where things came from. Well, like we did the Sinwali today, which was all based off a of signal, but it was 26 beats. So what I like to do with any technique is break it up in little pieces and teach bit by bit. Now, with that Sinwali boxing drill that we did, with the, usually right. what I would do is teach the cross across first, and then I would teach the Sinwali, and then I would teach the blocks and go back in. And this is pretty much what I did with the Sinwali we started with today. It got people moving, cranked up the tunes, had people switch partners. You weren't here when we were doing all that. So playing a lot of ACDC today because it's my playlist, you know. And I try to be very visceral. And when I'm demonstrating, I'm getting the moving and stuff like this so people can see how it moves. Because the problem we run into is, and we've noticed this with Professor, is at the end, he got so efficient. He wasn't moving Filipino anymore. He was moving efficient. And he stopped. I think a lot of martial artists do this. They, they have that DNA where they came from. And all of a sudden, it becomes less of that flavor or more of this generic, neutral move in and be there. And uh, I, I find myself doing that because I think all the students are going to do that one way or another sooner or later. They'll just get their timing right and they'll just step in. Right. So I make sure that I put a lot of that in there. I try to be very visceral with my teaching. Uh, Anderson wrote a thing that was very charismatic when I taught and stuff and when we did a few camps together. So I try to be explosive. Um, I try, I'll go slow, then fast, and then try to show things that would be Remy-esque in application for inspiration. Because at the end of the day, if we're so technical, and it's, we don't want to be that college professor who's A, to the co sign yeah, this, it's gonna be a tough and A to this, and you know, we, I mean, it's a combat art, so we need to lay the smackdown once in a while with control. Yeah, yeah. And we got Ooh. people don't have injuries. Jack. Hello, gents. Great to see the CEO of FMA with two of my men, Tim Wayne. And good to see you among them, Mr. Shikowski. John <laughs> Jack. Hey, 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 hey John. Not to be confused with Samurai Jack. Yeah. That's another badass. <laughs> but, um, okay, so what do you guys, okay. We got the theme. What you guys want to get across the students and child. So, from the point of observation, what do you like about what uh, Frank did? Not just his style of teaching, but what you like what he kind of did? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, so, when I was, so, the thing I probably saw the most was watching what he was doing the uh, Wally uh, seizing drill, the Wally application drill with, with the locks. And it's, it was interesting to see because with our same and different backgrounds, um, you're looking for, you know, what are the differences? What are the similarities? Do they make sense? Do you understand? And sometimes when people go through that and they talk about their details, you say, ah, great, that's perfect. And, and you're happy. So I was happy with what I saw. So that's no question. But also the explanation style is interesting. I, I think we all have the opportunity to learn when we work together like that, if we have an open mind. So uh, I liked that. I like seeing that. I like seeing what I liked, uh, what I liked about it, which is good. I like seeing what, some different approaches to some things. So that was good, uh, and I and I did like his progression. I'm a big big fan of progressions when you teach him. So he, he built one thing to another, and it was all accessible. They were they were doing it. Uh -huh. I would say also it wasn't we're not and when I'm saying this, it's not about physical execution. But it was a nice throwback to Remy to yeah. see that to because yep. I don't you I do this, but I don't do this a lot. Right. And it was nice to go like, oh man, that was that's very reminiscent of the old man. So I mean, because there's some things in here that we're gonna do that like I change all the time. And I tell we talked about this at the beginning of the seminar. I go, I don't change to be different, I change to be better. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes like, okay, so Larry Petit was known as the a certain era of JKD. He didn't evolve, he kept it for more. He goes, I teach it just the way, like a purist, just the way I was taught. And you need those people to show where it started and where it came from. You know, it's like, look, look how much we've evolved. And yeah, man. Like, no, from a historical point of view. Like, you know? if you didn't have it, it would be like a yeah. what it was. So, I mean, you look at, and, and you know, and traditional arts come back. Remember, everyone, oh, my God, everyone poo-poo karate. But what are they, what's the most popular fist in MMA fighting these days when they're on the ground? Hammer fists. You know, you know? And, and oh wait a minute, we do that all the time. Our most pop, our best strike should be a hammer fist. But all the things that people would poo-poo in the past, 
now you look, it's like, here's the relevance. It's, it's not necessarily that the material is bad. It's just the application may not be current. I know I put the science on the screen. <laughs> I know. I know, you're doing I, know I did both of these. Uh -oh. I don't, okay, I want to make sure they're all in science. If they are, then I don't know what to do. But Frank, it converts it. So with the uh, PG. Which, which style with you about his style? Would you know? Would resonate with you? Would you admire? Uh, definitely his enthusiasm. You know that that definitely comes across right away. His enthusiasm for what he does. Um, he's caring. He cares about the students. Um, he has some different techniques I haven't had. I mean, I've had similar techniques, but he executes them a little different way. So we have some of the same lineage, but at the same time. Because he's, he trains some different arts than I haven't trained in. Mm -hmm. He brings it maybe a little bit different you know, than I bring it. So I, I definitely learned by watching both of them today. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, especially you can pick up some stuff that you didn't have or got to. What about uh, Mr. Tyne? Nothing today. That's right. <laughs> no, no Ty and I teach so much together. So it's and we room yeah. together all the time. So we're constantly. So here's the thing that what I think helped. So the guys that we network with, we, uh, you know, so it's Ty, Craig, and Chad, and Master Parsons. Like, we all get together, we teach together, when we go out or back to our rooms, we debrief. We actually talk about what do you think about each other's session today. So, hey, listen, I liked what you said this. I didn't understand what you meant here. Mm -hmm. Now, I may not have been, now, here's the problem. A lot of times we're in a seminar, today is a perfect example. Um, there's a bunch of people I haven't seen in a while. And part of this for us, because we're not when we're not teaching, we might be networking. Well, we do our work on the floor, but we don't always get to watch everyone all the time. And we might half hear something. And I'm like, hey, what was that? that did I hear that right? That it sounded interesting. Or you didn't call me an asshole, did you? <laughs> like, well, maybe that's you know. But but the thing here is, Ty and I, uh, Ty and I have taught so much together, and we're going to be teaching together. And well, actually, the three of us will be teaching together in um, April at the symposium. Oh, in um, New Hampshire. Yeah. So, so you know, like, hey, I, I and, and like, he's, you know, he does a lot of the seminars, uh, my virtual seminars I do, and after we do the seminar, I'm like, hey, what did you think of when I said this, that, and the other thing? You know, and mine are hybrid, so I'll have a guy to work with. Well, actually, I have a room full of people, mm -hmm. and we'll train, and they'll, they'll participate virtually, and, you know, I, I tried putting, using a different ex uh, explanation today, so we're constantly bouncing off each other, so today was, was business as usual. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're also beforehand. I think I'm going to do this. Okay. <laughs> what about? Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Tell me how that works. You know. And uh, and so I actually picked up a couple things about the way he rotates to do your shoulder bump thing. And <laughs> yeah, you found out the hard way. Right? Yeah, I know, but that was nothing. Yeah. And then when you were there, when he was doing it to you, I was like, oh, twist the elbow this way so the elbow doesn't bend. Got it. But <laughs> but is I'd say for all for all sorts of purposes. Today was was business usual between the two of us. Yeah. We're constantly listening and and you know we encourage each other to. When we, we're not busting jobs. No, no, we're not busting jobs. No, when we're not busting jobs, we're either encouraging or we're busting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we either make fun of each other or we're. <laughs> we're, we're yeah. And like we're constantly trying to tear each other's material apart to to make sure that we give the best show possible. You know, because part of this is education, but also people come to have a good time. I mean. Um, yeah. We had a guy come in today. I don't, you know, some one of the guys that came in today goes, you know what? I've gone to seminars that I haven't learned at. I've gone to seminars I've learned everything at. But as long as I have a good time, I don't care which end of the spectrum it is. And if it's not enjoyable, yeah, I don't want to go to these. I have to have. I have to enjoy it to some extent or another. It's gonna be tough, right, man? If they're not like having fun, yes. you know I mean, that's going to be a tough sell. Like in the future. This is extra distracting because I actually had uh, like three or four people I hadn't seen for a while. Yep. Uh, so was one of my original students from back in Texas in the 90s was sure. here today. Oh, wow. That was Chris. And then, wow. of course, we're talking about Brett was here. Was here. We were talking to him. Yep. And Chris is funny, too, because Chris, Chris, I met Chris. He go, uh, I go, where's my T-shirt? Because he was wearing my t -shirt. He bought a T-shirt for me. And he got it when I was teaching it. He goes, you probably don't even remember yeah, it was the end of the Leon seminar in Toronto, in, uh, in Dallas. Well, you remember that. Yeah, and I remember when we were up here, when I taught at the other guy's place, at the camp with Rich and I was there, I did the reunion camp, and, and you asked me if you were trying to bust my chops, because I said I invited everybody to come to the reunion camp. Did you ask Jeff? I go, yeah, he just chose not to come, come to the event, because he had uh, events that were too close, and he didn't want to. Okay, okay, fine. And he couldn't, he couldn't, uh, he was, 
surprised that I remember because that conversation happened uh, 12 years ago. And when I first met him, it was even further back than that. Yeah, that's a good man. <laughs> well, it's the kind of stuff. Pretty sorry. sharp, but don't tell him. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm a snob about my techniques. I remember myself. <laughs> so, uh, Frank, tell us about that too. Would you uh, any takeaways? Yeah. You know, tell us about that too. <laughs> 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 I got a knife in my pocket. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, kind of similar. He has other backgrounds I don't have. He's been in the field since I have. You know, he probably has started the roots of the art school and what I have. Uh, so I think just a lot of the background information. Really interesting. Can you start from my historical perspective? Yeah, from historical. You know, yeah. like now he's talking about some of the terminology and you know, where the words came from and got changed. And, yeah, that's a lot of things I kind of study. I'm a fan of it. Like, I, I like the environment where you're learning stuff, not just in a you know, physical context, but you're actually learning history, history and all that. But uh, let's flip it. So, what did you see in front of you? Where is it? Well, I said it. It was a nice old monster to run. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was, it was so, you know, once again, because I know someone's going to say something, and Jerry, my kid's name is Jerry, Jerry will talk to you if you have a problem. Um, now, listen, uh, you know, here's the thing, is there was only one Remy Praces, but sometimes someone does something that's Remy, Place, Remy Praces classic material and presentation. It's all Remy's material. You know, well, well actually, it's somebody's material that Remy learned and then he did stuff with it. But to see the single Sinwali application drill um, or the seizing drill, that was just, it was so nice. And Frank's got a nice, he's got a nice steady progression. So he kept building off of things. So that was really good. Um, you know, it was good. To, okay, listen, I know who his teacher was. <laughs> I know who got him into modern earnings. That was, and I see a consistency between the two of these people from that teacher. And then, of course, all three of us became direct. So here's the, here's another thing. None of us started directly with Remy. Oh, no kidding. Nope. So I started, okay, so I started uh, in, in Buffalo, New York. The person who brought modern earnings to Buffalo was uh, Don Zang. Don Zang had fighting back instance. It was half, it was half watered down or modified Tracy's Kempo and half modern earnings. He had a student named John Bryant. John Bryant eventually left and opened up the school, the Filipino Karate Academy. And he became, he was first generation, he was second gen with Remy, but became a first generation with Remy because he went directly there. That's where I started. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, 85. So I became a certified instructor, which was, a basic instructor was apprentice instructor, but I was able to teach classes in 86. So I've been teaching since 80. I taught all of his kids' classes for him. While I was there, I'm just saying, for '85, we had like the Filipino Karate. Oh yeah, yeah. It actually uh, had the fill. So, so my the logo for my school. So, you, you know the wavy thing from the from the uh, uh, from the Dosey Paras logo. The, that's the Filipino flag. Okay. Rem used it too, but a different version of it. It was on our diplomas. That was on the window of the school I was training. There's one on the other and actually, the certificate up there has it. <laughs> so then I put Lapu Lapu on it, not knowing that that was a Datsu. Oh, and then by the way, decades later, I became Dutch. Yeah. So, <laughs> self fulfilling prophecy. I don't know. But but the uh, but the thing was, I had no clue it was FMA. A friend called yeah. me up and said, "You got to flip this. This is a cool ass school. Get your ass up here." Okay, yeah. fine. So I leave the school because the school was getting ready to sell out and go, and there was other things going on, and I just I just it, it was not a bad buy. If I left fair. We, we we but I left as a brown belt. Then Remy called me up and said, "Hey." So I kept following Remy around as a student. And then um, I met Eric a few times. And then Eric said, hey, Tim, come out. And that's how I got to meet these guys. Well, what did Eric do? Eric moved and said, you're working with Remy directly. What did he do? I got you going. Now that you're here, you work with Remy directly because I can't take you any farther. Boom. So we have this connection because on multiple levels because we both had, all three of us had Eric Alexander in common as friends and mentors and stuff. Super guy. Um, you know, so, and the funny thing was, you should make it something. What, what year was it when I crashed the party? <laughs> a Karen's fest? Oh, so 90, I think, something like that. So we're flying back from the Philippines, and he's telling me he's going to go to his first granddaughter oh, that, promotion. That other one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we talk about our martial arts children and grandchildren. Yeah. 
So our black belts are our children. Their black belts are our grandchildren. So he had his first granddaughter being promoted, right? Black. So he tells me, I got points and all this other stuff. I, you know, like, as we're flying home from the Philippines, I think I'm going to go with you. <laughs> so the points thing didn't work out, but Jackie Bradbury and Not Kevin yet. put a seminar together for me. I told him, what's going to, hey, listen, we put a workshop together. I'm flying to crash the party. It, it covered the whole trip. That's all I cared about because I wanted to crash the party. So Abel Martinez, which is uh, his student, and that's Karen's teacher. Hands out a flyer. Well, here, he hands out this testing information. He goes, hey, and on the back is the flyer of the first flyer that Eric Alexander used. Here, Really? I flipped it over. <laughs> it's the flyer that I used. And he took his name out, my name out, put his name in it. I was like, oh, my God. And I got it from Bill Adams, who hosted me for a seminar. Like, I'm like, talking about all the way back. So Connections this, and nostalgia. It wasn't, yeah, what it was year was this? That, gosh, that would 16? I met Eric 90 on the set in 1990. 91, I came out here, well, where, where was it, Richard? Uh, in Rocky Hill. Rocky Hill, which is the yeah, same thing. Came out here in 91 and did a seminar for him. 92, he moved out there, corrupted this guy. Then somehow I got to meet him. And then we go to the Philippines and I come back over, and here's a flyer that I used for my first Philippine martial arts seminar at Eric's. At Eric's. It was just, it was just it was just all, but we were all interconnected. Yep. And we all got, one way or another, we were all passed up to Remy Direct. By virtue of Remy. Yeah. Well, the, him, him by us, yeah, I was, I left, I don't know. But, but the thing here is, now here's the thing here. You can change generations in the martial learning process, but you cannot change the area, you, your air raw, you started it. Right. So, you know, uh, so, and that was it. You know, Eric, Eric got him started. I said, you're now a direction to Remy. If Remy will take you, which he did. I was actually glad I got started with Eric because let's go back in history. But So Eric came up in the, in the 80s or even earlier. But so I got to see, even though I came up starting in the 90s, I got to learn all of that 80s stuff that a lot of people started in the 90s didn't get to see because Eric gave me everything that he learned before then. So that was actually beneficial in that era. Oh, oh yeah, because a lot of stuff we were talking about today is that Oh, actually, I think you and I talked about it. Is that when a when a, an instructor goes on tour, it's like a band. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're talking about this. Okay. You know, when a band goes on tour and they're playing the next set, the next set, the the next tour, they can't put. Eventually, they have too much music to play in one night. So you have to make cuts. And let's say Zed, Led Zeppelin decided not to play "Stairway to Heaven." It doesn't mean it's not their song anymore. It's just they didn't play it on that tour. And unfortunately, some of the people were saying, "Well, I didn't see Remy do this, so it's." Like, not that anymore. Well, that was the we did a show on this. I never saw Remy do that. Yeah. Well, you weren't around long enough to see him do that. And I, I, I shared something today, actually, that I only saw Remy do at one seminar. That's really the bulk of people. The bulk of people I've met, they kind of were stayed in their own area. They waited for a professor to come to their area yeah. once, twice a year. So they might have a few Sinawalis or a form or two. Oh, but but then some the of us actually see. travel right. to try to get as much as we could. You know, uh, yeah, you're seeing difference. it twice a year, but yeah, you're making. Yeah. Well, effort to go but, but, so how how much training or how much travel did you do? Okay, so what you, <laughs> you should do on your show is ask in the future how people learn and what they want because I'd be I wouldn't be surprised if you find right. well, even be, but before that, I bet you'd be surprised at how many people didn't go on the road as much. I know. Well, say like when I do my bondo with Dr. G, you know what I do? I fly him into Buffalo because it's cheaper. <laughs> Well, because I can fly him in, and I can open a seminar up, and still get my privates with him. And usually, the people who show up pay for everything. I might put a hundred bucks in my top pocket. Yeah, I might take still. out a hundred bucks in my pocket. Who cares? Hundred. Right, so I didn't have to. It would have cost me a grand to see him to get out of town to go drive to him or whatever. Or I fly him into Buffalo. I can still run all my classes, do everything I need to do, and still be in my bed every night. No, that's I know. And like you like like you said, he, he that's spent, why you said it. Or also, he even spent a hundred. Yeah. Oh. Just make sure we're not missing anybody. All right, Eastern. Uh, what did Nathan write up there? Brett. Is he throwing me under the bus? Yeah, no, don't, don't listen to that. <laughs> don't listen to them. They're troublemakers. Yeah, you're right. I am. Are there plans for a follow up for the triple plans for a follow up to the triple th Any plans for a follow up? We haven't had time to discuss it, but. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be a discussion. 
Okay, I'll I'll throw this out there. <laughs> uh, Dean, ask the question: Who who is in favor of doing that? Who is in favor of doing that one? Oh, well, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we just got to work out logistics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got Terry from Stockton, Brett Reese. Yeah, I, just, and, uh, I think we have to do a little later in the year, so weather is less of a factor. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, I tell was, you, man, that's the thing with Connecticut. Like, it'd be like. I did that one time. Dude, I live in Buffalo. I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Yeah. But like, if, <laughs> you, if, you're, if you're playing anything like you know, January, yeah. and February, it's you know, it's just a crap shoot. Oh, yeah. we do. We do our. Oh, well, that's why we do our. Uh, we do a holiday event. We do. It's Christmas. I don't care. I, you know, if you're, if, and we're open. It's it's our holiday event. It's always been that. Usually the first week of December, and we're pretty lucky because winter really doesn't hit until January in Buffalo, and then January to March it's a crap shoot. But, I mean, I drove out here. There, the roads were not clear. But when, the, when I got to Massachusetts, the roads were clear but wet. But you had like eight inches of snow, and they're like, "Where? Well, well, where did that all come from?" Yeah. We didn't have that when I left Buffalo. So, but um, I think we'll probably look at like, Just like late March. But I'm, okay, so next month I'm going to be up in Boston at uh, Mars uh, Martial Research Institute. Uh, Mar oh, Mike Mayweather. and Mays? Yeah, I'm teaching with them. The end of the month, so nice um, that's far the way. So we wouldn't do it around then because it's it's still within an hour or two. Wait till like, you guys, like names. Well, we're doing the anniversary camp this year, so we that's have the to. Thing. We're trying to push that, but I mean, there's also the fall. We got plenty of time. We can do summer. The, we had a school cancel out because they forgot that they had their instructor. Actually, the one guy they sent representation, and they had to leave early because they do an instructor's dinner. And I was talking about the, to the uh, owner, who's a really good friend, uh, Dominic Violante. We've been building for years. And this is a guy that comes 20, 30 people deep. And it's like, yeah, I forgot to. I'm like, hey, no problem, brother. I'll see you at this event. I'll see you at yeah. that event. Or I'll come visit you directly. So, but um, we're always we're always up for doing different things. No, I think I should. I, I thought from an uh, outside lens, like watching you guys, um, I thought you guys connected well. I thought I saw harmony. We, we've known each other for like, years. I see disconnect. Like you know what I mean. So um, I thought that was nice. We talked. Well, here's the thing: what we talked about. This was we, we still okay. We didn't plan this. We talked about this. We could have done. We at one, initially, you know, you, you go to the backup plan. Okay, the backup plan is we each teach an hour, hour and twenty minutes. And then we do a joint session at the end. That's what we talked about. That's the most conventional that we would have gone. But the thing here is, when we talked about this last night, and we, it was a face to face conversation. Okay. It's like, listen, sometimes when you do three hours and we each get one hour, it becomes a competition. We don't want it to be a competition. No, no. We want to beat this. You know, I, I don't want to compete with these guys. I don't know. I want to, yeah, I want to compete with them. Not against them. So what's the alternative? What we did, we blended. So like, what did you guys add? Average half hour? 45 minutes? Uh, 45 minutes? I started like 20 minutes. Okay, so I did a warm up. So we did a 26 count Sinwali. It was all bits and pieces. It was all signal Sinwali. But I put some extra abanicos in there and some floor hitting and all this other stuff. And then I talked about how I like to move during Sinwalis. And and then we did a little fun energy drill. It was about a 30 to 40 minute warm up. So to me, actually at the end of that, if I didn't teach any more the rest of the day, I would have been content because I felt that I had a really good chunk of time with everybody. Yeah. But after out of five hours, or well, we did four hours, I would we were gonna teach more. <laughs> but the thing was that I kept this flow going and things going. It's like, all right, I've done enough, and if nothing else happens, I'm content because I got this piece out that I wanted. And I knew, because we had already been talking about, he was going to build off some things. And then later I got into more contemporary applications. You know, my problem is, Remy used to do stuff for the clientele and people didn't understand. So when he would do something for karate guys, how do, how do karate guys feed punches? And they stay out there. So since Remy saw that, you say, all right, now that the punch is there, we do the Sinwali, we do this. We know the punch isn't going to be there. We're yeah, talking about today. Yeah. Punch goes out and back. It's a two count. So we talk right. about what kind of attack stays out there. Chokes and grabs. Right. Or 
Yeah, grab, and I got one, you know. But it's the initial grab. That's where I like the one, two, three trap works. And then we have the, the split entries and the cruzadas and all that. We have that all in modern armies. But the thing here is, because we saw, because many people saw Remy teach these old school reference points, they misunderstood what he was doing because they didn't see him do other stuff. Because when he shows up to karate people, he would teach to them. He he would teach. Yeah, what well, I'm doing, uh, well, so we would do uh, a total of a thousand seminars. All right, 17 countries. I was huge in Denmark at one time in the Taekwondo community. And some of them, some of the, uh, because I would wear more of a traditional gi that they were used to seeing. The Filipinos that were the red, like Ernesto Price's program was, we've seen those Velcro tops, they're red with black stripes. Remy wore black with red stripes. So we were red, we were black, they were red. And their group, when you wore the black when you were the top guy, at least like the DAV does that. The red, red are all the foot soldiers, you know. Um, that's not how Remy did it. Remy just did black uniform. If you wore it, if you wore a Taekwondo outfit, he wouldn't care either. He just, you were training. So, but because I wore a traditional karate gi, because they stopped, essentially stopped making the uniform. And I was making reference points to their katas. I'm doing all these different things. And I'm, I'm taking these and these knife disarms and stick disarms I do and put it in this context of from here or from, you know, because all my friends do these arts. And we hang out and train with each other. So it's like, show me what you do. I'm curious. Yeah. And sometimes their explanations fit our material better than our own explanations do. Mm -hmm. Not to say that it's just about. So in modern, you swing here and you wash my feet. I'm switching my feet and I'll go back here. So it's better body mechanics. But the problem we run into is sometimes we can't communicate that. So I was hanging out with Bondo, Dr. G. He goes, well, Tim, why do you do this? I go, well, this is better about it. You can't all this other stuff. Why do you do it, sir? Well, those are safety cuts and strikes. <laughs> what do you mean? It's to clear the path for the weapon to travel. So I put, if it comes from my right, my right foot's in back, so it clears that path for the left foot. If I have this right foot in front and I swing down this way, <laughs> so if you switch the legs, it, it's a safer path for the weapons, edge or impact. Huh. Man. I was able to describe, I've got children. Why do we step this way so we don't hit ourselves? Yeah. I got eight year olds that can tell me that. You know, so a lot of times it's not about, well, I love, I love our Filipino, I love the martial art world mm -hmm. because sometimes someone has a better explanation. Yeah. Right. And, and, or a better application. Mm -hmm. I actually can come up with that at the moment. Yeah. All right, uh, skin, basketball. Make sure I'm not missing any questions. All right. Hey, uh, Nathan, Kali Listerson. <laughs> well, it doesn't count when I say it. You need to have some graphics, some little <laughs> yes. things just float across the screen. Uh, I will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're right. So we already talked about. So here's the thing: what I, you know, again, just watching from you guys, like I kind of mentioned, just like I want to get the feel for your interaction and how you, you know, you deal with all that. How do we get the rest of the community? Like I thought, what you guys did was incredible. And upon conclusion of the KI theme episodes, which I'm, I'm currently on, I'm going to actually try to orchestrate this summer getting North American KI instructors together. It's, I mean, it's at ground level. Uh, well, do you know what I got going on in September? What's that? PTK's Next Generation Seminar in Buffalo. So, Tuhan Arlene had to back out because of the contractual thing with work. But I got Jack Latour, okay. Belton, Lewis, and right. Chris Mendigma all coming to teach in Buffalo. Chris, I, 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 go. On. I like to. PTK's Next Generation, not the top dogs, no. the next gen guys to yeah. bring. To bring this back together. Well, it's the funny, the guys that I'm kind of getting together as far as KI are the next generation. generation. These are not older cats by any stretch of imagination. So, so can you tell them a Star Trek geek? Yeah. Star Trek next generation. So yeah. PTK, so now you got KI next generation. So we're really, um, so I'm hoping this will, this will work just because I think that's what it's going to take. Like we could talk about it, but I think people need to see action. Like you get three in a row. Get on the floor. 
That's what I mean. Like you, the people saw you three on the floor. They need to see that. Well, what did you think our vibe between us? I thought I, I could see any any fraction of minuscule uh, animosity. Because we're family. We're family. Yeah, family. yeah I thought and you guys worked really well together. I didn't see. Any why does shit go sideways? Ultimately, it's all egos and money. Ego and insecurity. Oh, and the money thing we already talked about ahead of time. Oh, by the way, if you want us, it's two thousand each. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> oh, <and> it's, <laughs> I'm just letting you know this is a, if you want if you want the triple threat modern RD seminar in your neck of the woods, it's two thousand dollars ahead plus uh, first ultra first class air, <laughs> super ultra yeah. first class air fare, charter plane, charter charter. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I mean the thing here is, listen, we we just did a show on this the other day on seminars taking it to the next level. And I, got, I was a little distracted because something happened that got me off. I, I, I dropped the ball on my end and a couple things, and I was trying to scramble to get the show ready because I'm still running a school. Um, and I was waiting for a business call that I didn't realize that it was President's Day, so it never happened. So that's where my ball So I'm waiting and waiting not to commit to something. So, um, so, but we talked about a whole bunch of things. And where things go sideways is money. We talked. We talked about the. I said, "Hey, what do you think?" And he's like, "Well," and he told Frank told him, told us his parameters. We told us ours, and I said, "Okay, we can." Yeah, they all align with each other. And then last week Friday, we talked about it again because because and I said, "Look up here in the discussion. This is we said X, Y, and Z. So we repeat X, Y, and Z. So everyone knows what." He's expecting you know, what our responsibility is, what his responsibility is, and what the outcome we're expecting based on this happening. You know, like Professor, he, he had a flat fee for me, fifteen hundred dollars. He took care of his own airfare. Sometimes he put himself in his own hotel room because he loved coming to Buffalo. Eventually, I just put him at my house. But yeah, I'm there. I, yeah, oh yeah. Well, for me, he did. you know, and for you, he did. Uh, actually, airfare he usually took care of himself because he got he was a master at getting cheap fare. <laughs> And, but but he also may stay with you four days, which hey, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But the the thing here is that uh, you know two fifteen hundred to two thousand was normal. I paid him three grand one time because I had a hundred people coming through yeah, the right, door. Right, right, right. So I, I I pay a performance bonus. Yeah. So these are the, and these are the things that and here's on the seminar thing. You know, let's say Ty hosts me in and he comes out real light, like he's like Carly on my show. He goes, dude, I got a you know, I was like. Uh, actually, I did something in uh, in Germany, and the guy didn't get any, what he wanted. He gave me all the money. He gave me fifteen hundred euro for one night, a Wednesday. Wow. And then, like, I wasn't going to argue with him. And I go the next day, I go, "So, here's five hundred back." What? I go, "Dude, you put this on me. You put me up in your house. You're paying for all this stuff." And you know what? That's a big picture. That's the that. This is when we talk about business. Okay. You know, he was taking care of me, so I took care of him. That's a two-way customer yeah. service thing. Yeah, and I love the guy. The guy's great. Yeah, people remember that. But, I mean, that's – and when you take that off the thing and we're not jealous and insecure about things, that it's jealousy and insecurity. Yeah. If you do good and clarity, meet open communications, manage your expectations across the board. Everything's on the table. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been doing this a long time now. So yeah. We're, we're doing it. Yeah, you're right. It's not like you guys <laughs> – yeah, 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 I'm sure that We wouldn't even have approached this if we yeah. had – Misgivings about it. No, right. Yeah, it's kind of questionable. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did have misgivings about you. Yeah. We got like, what do you think of this Frank guy? I mean, oh, Frank. Well, like, when well, we did the reunion camp, so I did the ten-year anniversary camp, the, the, the Monterey's reunion camp. I told everybody, you get yourself to Buffalo. I will. I gave everyone a seventy-five dollar meal card with Remy's portrait on it. So it was really cool. I took care of their hotel rooms. I said, I'll put you in the room with another instructor. If you don't want to be with another instructor, you can pay for that half of the room. And when everything was said and done, all the instructors, I put a thousand in their pocket. They had never been paid that much, not to mention what they sold at the event. Huge event. Over, under promise, over deliver. That's the mindset. We all put it aside. I told them what we're going to do. It was a huge success. There was one little snap through with a guy because we didn't do a photo with him. And he got a little upset. I talked about it. I go, you were the one that's saying that you were going to do undercover work and you don't want your photo out there. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll make this right. Put everyone out there. I had to tell everyone, listen, I got someone out. And I, we did, redid one of the photos. 
They go, no one can take a picture because we got a guy going undercover and he needs to stay off the grid. And the one person about to say, what do you, oh, no, 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 I get it, I get it. And then that person cleared the room again, or cleared the, the, uh, the after we did that photo, he cleared the area so more people could take photos because some people weren't there the day before. So that was the only snafu we had with the event. Well, that's absolutely You nice. know, and, and that's, there's no snafu with this event. No, no, I thought it went really we smooth probably just, you guys. We overdid it with five. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know what I really liked what you guys did was, uh, like, that kind of, that really, I uh, we uh, have done events like that. Do that's this the first time I've ever kind of seen that. Like they usually, like you said, they hour block, hour block, yeah. hour block. You know that constant rotation. Well, I uh, uh, where did it work? And so Bruce Chutnik, which you're going to meet. Yeah, he was one. He was a student of Angel and Remy's, and I didn't like him when I first met him. He didn't like me when he first met me, but it was the host. So there was a host in Buffalo. I went to stop by. Blah, 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 blah. So we're at the Saratoga Martial Arts Festival. Perlman was, uh, Steve Perlman was the host. So he puts the two of us together. Oh, great. This is, a, oh, I hate this guy. And it's like, and the night before we got along great. I'm like, huh. So then he taught basically, without knowing he was going to do it, he taught sobrata drill. While I was teaching disarms off of each move. So then we did sobrata drill into the each disarms. And it was like, bum, bum, bum. But it was like, okay, Tim, you go back. Front. And we literally, he was like, you go next to him. Okay. Well, he did this move. I'll do a disarm. Then he did, then all of a sudden I realized he was going through sobrata. So I just kept teaching the disarms off of every reference point he did, and it worked out perfect because we went back and forth, back and forth. It wasn't a comparative thing; it was a yeah. blending of things. Awesome. So, how do you? What would you guys, as far as advice, like hey, this is going to work for me as well? I mean, that's going to try to attempt this like this, this summer, hopefully. You know, for different systems to kind of like think about it. Like you're a Maronese guy, and you're putting you're creating a BTK. Like you know what I mean? Oh, I mean everybody's friends out there. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Good. So like, what, what your uh, like for what you guys kind of did today? Like for other what aspects? Just getting. Are you talking about hosting? Or are you talking about not hosting? Like just getting like three people on. The floor. I would probably first start with two people on the floor. Yeah. Get two people to work together, you know, and and if you know each other already and you and you know that you can just eat out together, you could do that with some people, and that would be your two people. Teacher. That would be your kind of test. Uh, yeah. The other thing is, okay, listen, this worked because it's this three, these three people. Gotcha. Modern Ernest is just as fractured and damaged no, as no, every no. other Filipino system out there that has lost its grandmaster. Yeah. Matter of fact, every martial art. Is just as fractured <laughs> as we are. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. You know. Okay. Look at Parker's Kepa. <laughs> but you know what? But the thing, is, the thing is, they didn't question whether they were moving forward. The question was with whom. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but the thing here, that's going to happen. But we got to look at, you know, here's something that the three of us look at: a bigger picture. I'm gonna. I already know the answer. You're last. <laughs> You're second. What's your concern about our future? Well, there we have a future. <laughs> What's your concern about our future? <laughs> because my concern about the future is that modern race will die with this generation of people. Because too many people are worried about becoming grandmasters and getting all this rank and stuff without doing the work. And that's what our show talks about all the time. Do the work. Now, if you can get past that. Okay. So, so yeah. I was going to say, so I'm going I'm to interrupt him. Because that guy. <laughs> but so to me, if people forget that it's about the art, the students, the students, and think it's about them, you're, you're, you're at a dead end. You, you have to remember that the students in the art are the only, the students are the only thing continuing the art. You will only go so far, and then you stop. So it has to be about the students, and the next generation, the art itself, and that has to be your primary focus. When I do this stuff, it's literally not about me. Yeah, I'm enjoying the hell out of it, but that's, that's an extra cool bonus because I don't enjoy right. it, but my focus is on that. And professor really, really knew that crystal clear. Mm -hmm. You know, he would teach you, and he'd say, "Okay, I want you to go back and teach to somebody." Yes. And partially that was because that helped us remember it. Partially, that's how the art keeps growing. It's good it's right going out there and spreading the seeds, and you know, so he knew that really well. Yeah, I mean, some of these arts, you know, it's like um, not that I want to be right or I want it to happen, but I think in a decade, well, two decades, I think it's going to be really interesting when I look at some of these styles that I've covered. Mm -hmm. That are really, 
well as far as teachers that are teaching it and are being proactive, or even the spreading of it, which a few of these is practically zero. Um, so I think two decades, I think this could be interesting as far as like some of these labs. Unfortunately, um, well, you guys obviously got this. You guys are fine. You got to cover. No, 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 no. We don't. We're yeah, but compare the other systems. No, I, well, okay. No, listen. We're talking in general. I figure I got 15 years on the map. Yeah. Okay, I'm 56. Right. Okay, I'm, not, I'm almost 57. So that'll put me at what 72. Yeah, almost 72. And, and I'm the same. So that doesn't. So mean. the two. We're not going to be tearing up the seminar circuit at 72. Right? No, no, but you'll have fun because of the way you guys are spreading. Hopefully. And the hopefully. Yeah. The, the, the problem is, is how about is, is about the detractors out there causing trouble because they're not part of this because they chose not to be part of this. Oh, those are that are just not. Yeah, and and some of the problems. Okay, so here's something we're going to talk about on the show for the for the business, the school things. Mm. Some people have no right teaching. Not everybody can teach. Okay, no. some people are that, in, right, right, and it's okay. Some people are stuck teaching because there's no one else left, and I get that. Yep. But some people think that they have this self-righteous thing that they should be teaching and the grandmaster all this other crap. I'm like, the farthest thing from the truth, you should be gone. <laughs> okay. There is no deserve. No, you don't. You, we, we, you don't. No, no. We, we earn everything we get. We don't inherit. You know, and the thing here is like, I, I don't, I don't know what you're preaching. <laughs> um, the, all of that. We have a bigger gene pool, but, but. Our problem is we had the biggest gene pool and we had the biggest shrinkage because no, I I don't know of any other commercial modern learning school out there at the time of Remy's passing. Not a school that offers modern learning. Right. Okay, I grapple. I'm not a grappler. Right. I kick. I'm not a kicker. Yeah. Okay. I can do a lot of things, but modern learning, the Prices Family Systems, are my specialty. And I teach all the aspects of punching, kicking, locking, throwing, holding. And yes, there's some departments I should be better at than others. Got it. But I have a standalone program. A stand I have a business that pays my mortgage, my uh, loans. It pays all this stuff. Remy didn't have that. Remy had a bunch of Taekwondo and karate schools that did it on the side. And he was great at getting the word out there. No one got the word out better than him. It doesn't sound like it. But... He didn't have the succession plan set up. Well, and the will was ignored, so we don't even want to go down there. They never, never did the damn will. So there was a coup, and as far as my concern, as far as I'm concerned, my opinion. But the fact of the matter here is, you got people who are choosing not to work with others. They talk all this hypocrisy that they're about the art and all this other stuff, but they're intentionally leaving people out. Mm. You know what I'm talking about. You know. Um, and they don't want to be part of things if I'm part of it. Or they don't want to be part of something if some oh, if you work with so and so, we won't work with you. Yeah. That that's that, that mindset's gotta go. Yeah, that's yeah. just terrible, man. I, I just I can't even hear it. And that's all the more short. Hey, what was that last one? Mine's a long one. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any questions. I think these are mostly comments coming in from Brett. Do we like Brett? No, Brett's a good guy. Brett, oh, hello. Brett. Do I know Brett? Um, I don't know. But Brett, if I don't know you, say hello. Let me know. Very supportive of the channel. <laughs> he, he might not want to know. How'd <laughs> <laughs> you get that arm guy? Okay, get rid of him. Yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, like, I just, I mean, we got to, it just has to, has to happen. And I think what it is is like anything else. It needs to be seen. It needs to be evidenced. And there's got to be an aspect of role model. There's got to be a moment. How you guys today was a good like for everybody to see, which is you know, I, I want Facebook, Facebook Live and on this interview because I want to see, regardless of the art or the style or sanction, whatever we have you, I want people to see the evidence that this can be done. Well, I think you know? one of the things to point out is it probably also depends on the person doing it, right? So mm -hmm. I have, you know, I have a, a multi FMA style gathering twice a year. Um, but it's a different kind of uh, than other people. But it works for me because what did, what did I do? I made a picnic. I made it to where uh, that comfort level I was talking about before. Right. And I just, if you build it, they will come. And I just threw it out there. We're going to have fun and play and I mean, share. Even the last one was amazing. It was yeah. cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was oh, freezing. Yeah. I went under sparring in the dark. Yeah. I mean, that was great. But anyway, you throw it out there and you just, and, and, you, and you realize that there is, 
and you don't give any opportunity for any sort of uh, any sort of shenanigans or, or weird interactions that are negative. That's just not a thing. Yeah. Uh, it, and no truck to that at all. And we're all here to share and play. And it, it so far yeah. worked out. At the moment it doesn't, then I'll have to say something yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Well, with the event you're trying to put on, here's what I would here's what I would say to everybody out there. Here's the question. You have to ask them. Yep. Are they concerned with the future of the art? I would say no. That's the question you asked them. Yeah, which I know the answer. And then you can sit there and say, well, then if your does your concern for the art supersede your feelings for somebody else? Yeah. You know, because the thing here is, okay, there's been a whole bunch of people that wrote articles in the past for modern art. Well, Remy was alive, and of course, people get you know there was an article Jeff Delaney wrote, and people asked me about it. I go, oh, yeah, I saw it. I didn't read it, and they're like. Well, what do you think about it? Well, I didn't read it. <laughs> There's nothing to think about. Well, what do you think about the whole thing? Okay, all right. Let me ask you this. Was it a good article? Did it promote people looking into the art? And if the answer is yes, that's good for all of us because here's the problem. People are concerned that they weren't in the article. But so he's in, uh, he was in Dripping Wood, Texas or something like that. Dri Dripping Springs, Texas. I'm in Buffalo, New York. If one or two people in Buffalo get excited about this article and say, I gotta find this modern Arnie stuff. Right. It's good for everybody. All right. Mm -hmm. They're gonna they're gonna look and they go like, oh shit, he's in Texas. I wonder if there's anyone here in Buffalo. Right. And guess who shows all up for Filipino martial arts in Buffalo? This guy. Mm -hmm. And they say, All right, well, uh, what about in Connecticut? I wonder if I'm if I'm in Cromwell or Middletown, Connecticut. And and I see an article of something like, Oh wait, here's this school here that advertises it. And if we understand that, if we can get off the, if we can get out of the thing that, if, if we could have sat there and go, it would have been nice if I was in the article, but the article helped the community. We go with that mindset. No, I know. As That's a global, good. As a global mentality. As opposed to BS, yes, I wasn't part of it. What do I know? Yeah, you know? no, 100% as opposed to me being. We had a, one of my black belts did an article on me. And I, and I said, no, no, no. You got to do it on Modern Nieces Next Generation. I actually told him, what, here's what the article is going to be Modern Nieces Next Generation. Here's your criteria you should follow. People that stick out with unique situation, unique attributes and stuff in regions of the country. They actually did the U.S. and Canada, and a, a whole bunch of us were listed in there. Okay, so that would have been um, Eric Alexander. That would have been maybe Bob Quinn, maybe not. I think so. Maybe Bob Quinn, uh, myself, Jay Spiro yep. out of Detroit. Um, Dan Anderson, or not, no, no, yeah, Dan Anderson, Dan Anderson, and uh, I think an honorable mention to Stephen Do or Mike Donovan up in Canada. Now the article was supposed to be eight pages, and it was all really an homage to Remy, but it got cut down to eight paragraphs, or, 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 or yeah, about eight paragraphs. It was a side thing. Modern is next generation. Guy said, came up to me and said, well, well, the director of the board, well, what do you think about it? It looks like it was all like, one of your can am things. I go, what's the problem? Well, people said, let them write their own damn article. <laughs> Did the article promote modern earnings? Yes. Did you get people excited about it? Yes. Are the people in Chicago are worried about me? If they get excitement in Chicago, they're gonna train with you. Yeah, right, exactly. Now I did have people from Oregon reach out to me to do seven hours instead of the person 40 minutes from the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh well, hey, how did I meet Eric? There's a whole bunch of people over here. And he brought me in because he wanted modern niece as untainted as possible because he tried to work with the people in the area but they refused to distill it so i'm not going to say that that's not going to happen because it has happened. but the thing here's the whole somebody off the street versus a connoisseur they're just going to come knocking on whatever closest door no the closest right they're going to be creatures of that i got people because of a freaking uh, perfect weapon was <laughs> because he beat up a couch with a pair of sticks dude i want to do that i go like sticks i don't that but yeah. we, we teach you how to do it better <laughs> we talk about this all the time about you know hey you know so and so's doing this so and so's doing that and even in modern right and is it good then that's good good for them and what's well, good for everybody <laughs> is good for all of us <laughs> even if it's yeah. not good what's our comment good for them <laughs> but, but, so exposure right goodness that's all like that stuff helps everybody that's like exposure right does that mean right Listen, if they're not making an ass of themselves, who cares? But, you know, the point is you want them to succeed because it only helps everybody. No, I know. I know. You, you get know. so caught up sometimes these guys get caught up in 
Talked about our show the other night. We'll talk about this show. You don't like what's on the show? Turn it off. Okay. But when you're out public, we're on. We're, on, we're performing. We. This is performance art. Oh, next month you're joining us for performance art. Okay. <laughs> and those, yeah, because we're doing martial arts and we're performing for the cl- for the crowd. Okay. Next well, month. Yeah. Oh no, two months. Two months. In April. Oh, in April. Right. So we're doing this thing together. Okay. So at events like that, you gotta watch your P's and Q's. We gotta. We have to be positive ambassadors. I said, well, well, what about the show? You say some things. Yeah, I say some things. Too bad. Screw it. Okay. But you could turn the damn thing off. I still talk about it. You can talk about that, of course. I just want to know. I still do that. You can talk about it. You can talk about it all day long. Right? But only straight to my face. But the thing here is, if all of a sudden I'm teaching a seminar and I start breaking out about politics or religion yep. or stuff. Now, if we can talk about something, if it affects it, like, hey, listen, you know, when the last trip we went to the Philippines, it was an election. What was that? Well, they only have an election every six years. And if we were there during it, we got the hell out because things got a little violent, all this other stuff. Okay, now listen, there's a high Catholic thing, religion over a high percentage of Catholic, but really it's a hybrid between the Muslim culture and Catholicism. What are you talking about? Well, they do the hunting, hunting. Right. And, and then you know, like Janice is like, well, they don't have charms in the Catholic religion. I'm like, it's called a rosary. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing here is, it's you know, but, but we might talk about things of that nature, but right. we don't talk about who we liked in the election or whatever. We don't talk about it, uh, about people's. Uh, I mean, I don't want to do those because if you do that in these events, then all of a sudden you're like they're almost like they're they're uh, being kidnapped, held hostage. He was he went to an event that he was practically interrogated at. Yeah. Because you hung with me. And I'm like, why well, don't you just take the support? He just paid for your seminar fee. And someone just recently told us. He showed it to an event. I go, the one guy goes, are you here to challenge me? I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, should I? I mean, I would be like, dude, you should have called me up. I would have phoned out. That would have been good. One. Uh, but I mean, the, the, we, 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 need, yeah, we need to put out a good... If people are out there doing a good thing, even if it's we don't like what they're doing, but if, if, if it plays it's, good for the community, it's all good. One hundred percent. Yeah, right. If, it, if it's doing something positive for the local, yeah, one hundred percent. We think, right? Definitely. You know, I just focus on my work. You know, <laughs> I've been I've been doing this a long time now. I play competitive sports as a kid, so I'm aware of all the politics. I'm aware of what people do, um, and I just focus on my work. I'm not worried about. That's why are you doing so long? So you don't get caught up in all this. I, I don't. I teach seminars. I teach my classes. I have private lessons. I have a Zoom. And I've been doing it for a long time. I brought a professor in from 1992 to about 2000. So this area is rich with the modern East. And beyond that, I'm not worried about it. I try to get along with everybody. You know, yeah, I think they do. Me and somebody else doesn't gel well. Then I just say, well, peace be with you. Again. Good luck to you. And, yeah, no, no, no. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Yeah, based on how I see you on Facebook and all that, I, I wouldn't think anything different. He said it. He actually, he just nailed it. Yep. What did you What did you do when you were younger? I played competitive sports. This is not a competitive sport. This is not weak calf. Yeah. This is not a tournament league. The problem is too many people think this is a competition. Yeah. It's like if you want to compete, let's get in the ring and do that. But that's not what we're trying to do. No, no, no. You know, I say, hey, you want to teach more seminars than me? Good, I challenge you to. Actually, <laughs> anyone who's been doing modern ace, 30, 30 plus a year for the last two decades, I challenge you to do more. Because if you're doing more, that means it'll increase the gene pool of our of our people, which means we'll have better chance of succeeding. We need, I need, we need, because when we talk about, we're worried about the future of the art. Right. We need everyone in modern art needs to be successful. Yep. Because if we're all successful, that means they'll be a next generation. No, that's a good point. we don't want to be the last person standing. That's <laughs> yeah, an apocalypse I mean, think, thing or the Highlander. But yeah, it's not going to spread like two people, you know, trying to push the envelope. You know, and, and I'm supportive of however people promote it. I mean, whether yeah. you're teaching a couple of students somewhere or whether you're mm. teaching fancy seminars, but you know, independent it's, or yeah, or to me, it's not a competition thing. It's like you know, we all need to work together. We all have different resources. We all have different goals. I mean, they have different goals in it, you know, but um, I support anybody you know, who's really trying to make a positive difference and really grow yeah, the art. I, I wouldn't, right? Unless, unless you got insecurities. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and touche. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're, you're you know what I mean? Like if you're not insecure, if you're if you're secure about yourself and what you do, you're going to be happy for others and promote others and try to bring them up if you're secure. Well, yes, you know? Okay, let's put it this way. How secure are you, Mr. Dean? I'm very secure. Of course, because if you so as we having been on podcasts. <laughs> People don't always like what's being said, and they take it out on the host. No. If the host was insecure, a long time ago, this this podcast would have stopped. I think I would have stopped at like 30 or something. Say, no, you might not have done that. It would have been like the third episode. You're like, okay, I'm done with it. I, think so. right. yes. I can't see. Tim said the logo is covering it. <laughs> no, the logo that looks like it's on your head. Oh, Dean. Oh. Wait, well, it's on me. How's it on me? Because it's reversed. Oh, oh, hey. Oh. I'm sorry. Is that better? Come on. Wait, wait. Is this better? That's probably a lot better, right? <laughs> I was trying, I was intentionally keeping myself. I wanted, I wanted you guys to be the focus. So. Richard. Oh, good guy. Richard Pacman? Yeah. yeah, Richard Pacman is a good guy. Paulo. A little better? Okay, tell me if this is better, Paulo. Is this better? That's better. Yeah, that's better, better. So then there's no Dean. That's what he wanted. There's no Dean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. It's okay. I want you guys to be the focus. I don't need, they don't need to see. Well, it's getting dark anyway. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego. All right. No, no, Richard Pacman, man, he's good people. My, all right, good, all right, much better. Much better. Okay. Hey, yeah. Paulo, brother, how you doing? He's going to uh, Brazil. Yeah, you in Brazil yet there, baby? Yeah. For the nuts. Trip to Brazil. The nuts, yeah, the nuts. Yeah. I mean, I'm not back when he gets back. I got him coming on twice. So yeah, Paulo, when you get back, you, you got to uh, please, please. You, you never know when we're gonna have a GM bogey sighting. You gotta get a hold of me. Yeah. <laughs> I want, I want uh, GM bogey to teach with Paulo. Oh yeah, GM and bogey and Paulo teaching well, together. Gonna, here's the thing. That'd be awesome, guys. guys <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, Mana, I am the one and only rep under GM bogey. That's right. Paulo is his insolent nephew. <laughs> That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well then I would like to see GM Bogey use Paulo oh, as it's a even better. It's yes. even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yes. heading on Tuesday. How long are you gone, brother? All right. He's okay. Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, does that mean you can do something Monday? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. Or we can just wait till you get back. No, but this is good. I'm glad you came out. Yeah, so am I. I. I'm actually really glad I came out. Matter of fact, you know, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, to uh, out there for five days. Uh, one, to see you guys. Uh, two, to see, uh, you know, I thought it would be a good theme to kind of cover three instructors under one roof, teaching the same thing, you know, working together. I think it'd be, I think it's good for the community to see this. Um, so I'm glad it made it happen. Well, and then you're going to have a sampling of this in uh april correct yes yes in front and the whole thing will be it'll be the fma invasion of the martial arts symposium right and <laughs> will be that minority group so it will be the which is getting better it'll be bigger the, will it be the imposium imposium we will impose <laughs> ourselves the fma imposium <laughs> of the symposium uh, yeah, so, I, like uh, think, I like to think that professor creases if he were to see this like he'd be extremely happy yeah. and proud Seeing us all working together. Oh, know, I'm sure. Based on what you guys told me about him, it's mm -hmm. hard to. Oh, he'd probably call me a troublemaker for some things, but I think as a whole, he, <laughs> he, he, you know, you know, everyone, listen, everyone says that. We know Eric's after that. You know, we well, know yeah. Eric's after that. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, listen, I don't, I don't fault someone for making mistakes. We're human. You mm -hmm. know, and as long as we learn from them, that's great. You know, as a whole, as a whole, I think there's a lot of things he would be loving that I'm doing. I know there's a couple of things he would have been disappointed and sad about, maybe even mad about. But the thing here is, he was the glue that brought us together. So we knew with any system, whoever the instructor is, once that once that glue is gone, it's going to separate. That's the norm. No one, no one should worry about it. I don't know of any system that stayed together. Exactly. Any system. Yeah, exactly. okay? And that's fine. You know, it's just how we coexist with each other after that point. And my whole thing is, you don't have to like what I'm saying, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying, but we should be able to peacefully coexist. Yeah, and yeah. just be like have respectful dialogue. Yeah. Okay, there might be differences of opinion. Well, right now, you know, 
there's another level of that too. So even if that can't happen, even if that can't happen for the students for the art, yeah. you should be able to do a combined event and be professional on the mat together, regardless of even that. Right? That's a small. That's a small. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. There's people like for the better of the art. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and really care. And we've done. That. We've done. That. And I've given up on those. I will not host any of those anymore. I'm putting together events that I feel a team that's going to promote the art. But here's the thing. If someone else was going to host it, I can easily, closely, uh, uh, peacefully coexist with any of these guys. Ty's been around when I've done things with people that I despise. And I was all manners. And you would not, nothing that was said and done started from, me. oh, but Tim brings drama. No, Tim is there. The drama is because Tim is there, not because of the thing. Yeah, what no, Tim's right. doing. People don't. Certain people don't like me. All right, but you know what? The students. Here's the thing. Now, here's the thing for all you out there. The students don't give a damn. That's right. The students, if they were taught properly, are just in it for the art. And in fact, it gets in their way. Yeah, if they're taught properly, they should be made inclusive, or even have any of that. So when we go to an event, I mean, here's the thing: is like, let's say. Uh, well, okay, so the first camp I did, the tenure, was the month, was the anniversary camp. Mm -hmm. And the second one had two lines, the, the 20th anniversary or reunion, reunion slash memorial camp. Everyone focused on the reunion. They forgot it was Remy's memorial. Literally, the weekend we did it was the 20th anniversary of passing. They focused on the first part, and, with, and they didn't focus on the students. They focused on themselves. Okay. If we put the students behind us, if we put the instructors above all, that's where the problem is because leaders are supposed to serve the community. I don't give a shit about the leadership in modern learnings. I'm concerned about the community and students. That's what's important. And, and you know what? For all these people I like, I don't give a damn about that many people I, I like. I don't even care if they hate me. We can be on a bill together for multi art. Okay? But we have to remember that it's about them and not us. Paulo disagreed with you. Jay Paulo, I, I <laughs> no, see no, the bingo. Said, bingo. <laughs> I see the, I can see the bingo. I'm far enough away from the screen. <laughs> that one I can see. If I'm up close, I can't read the damn thing. <laughs> but no, but you, I mean, yeah, I've been saying those kinds of things. And, Boom. Yeah. Yep. If this, this is what a big pet peeve for me, and I know someone agrees with me. More of them, maybe we all agree. Well, in modern East, there was only one grandmaster. There's only supposed to be one grandmaster. There's 20 now. 20 I've, GMs. I've spoken about this. Okay. I have a GM title from Ernesto. And he told me, it said, I can't promote you in my brother's art, but I can promote you in mine. But he didn't promote me in modern. He promoted me in Formata. Okay. Mm -hmm. I use the Datu because with the value of, because of how, how many GM titles are out there now, it's worth shit. The dots who supersedes everything as far as I'm concerned. Because there's only six and they're hand chosen by Rick. But the thing here is this people are worried about themselves and they're not producing or encouraging students to carry on. That's why I will never do a reunion camp because what happens to the class of every reunion? It keeps shrinking. We need to put out more people. We need to increase the people. Like I said, I need everyone to be successful out there. Right. This art I put above everything else. I sacrificed having children for this damn thing because I love the art so much. But, you know, this has got to be first, not second. Well, I think you guys are collectively keeping it. Or, may, or you know, at least... Is Brett saying I'm an asshole and should shut up? No, no, no. He is yeah, saying, I express this to all my employees uh, Time, but eventually realized through action uh, ten years. Okay, yeah, he's just kind of agreeing. He's just, yeah. but yeah. So, oh, um, we got. I got myself. I'm sorry, guys. No, 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 no. I derailed the conversation. My bad. No, no worries. Man, he's still, is Paulo going on a rant here? People, he disagree. Oh, my opinion. They can hate me. Yeah, right. They, the day what does it matter? Well, who cares? <laughs> is this um, what we say? We tell Paula to shut up. No, <laughs> I'm joking, Paula. Is <laughs> <laughs> that good? He wrote like that. I can't see. No, uh, he said this is you know you should never resist. So it is. It's worth saying the back part. But 
but what people should never resist is for an FMA practitioner to express their opinion and share their journey. Right. Okay. Which is what FMA discussion is all of. Yep. So, closing thoughts, guys. Frank. I thought it was a great day. You know, thank you all for coming out today. I oh, think it's a pleasure. It was a positive move in modern East. I thought it was very positive. And we're going to do it again. Guys. We're going to do it again. Yeah, I, I salute you guys. I think it was, uh, this is why I want other people to see this. You guys laid some groundwork here where there's uh, other styles, regardless, can emulate. RPG. I, I'm, I'm jabbering on enough, but no, thank, thank you for having us. Thanks for showing up, and thanks for the people that were putting up with us up on the floor. It was a blast. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you because I invited you to be our guest. And I didn't want you to do anything other than come out and participate. Uh, you I, chose upon yourself to come with us. Because I yeah. wanted you to see what modern East looks like. Yeah, yeah. And I'm when it's working. working. Yeah, no, and I appreciate it. So uh, thank you for oh, yeah. for uh, donating your time today to not only uh, take time away from what you would do in family and stuff, coming here. Put up with us for a bunch of hours, <laughs> and then do this show afterwards. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and uh, for any of you guys out there that this guy's been helping out, you owe him thanks because he's given us. I mean, there's multiple. This is a consistent platform for promoting Filipino martial arts, and he doesn't put money in his pocket on us. He he does this for the love of the art and makes donations and fundraising, and uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. I salute you guys. I, mean, I, mean, I love what I saw today. And I just hope that um, you guys can take it back on this and continue mm -hmm. it. And others can model off you. Jerry's upset, though. <laughs> Jerry didn't get to be used today officially during class. Well, that's Jerry's right. a little upset, but that's okay. You think he'll get over it? He'll get over it. Jerry will okay. get over it. <laughs> line, line with Lucille. He'll be happy. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, there you have it. Episode two sixty two. Holy wow. cow! And wow. the and wow. the and the books. And uh, I want to thank you guys. I appreciate you. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys sticking around and and doing this after a long day of teaching. So I'm, I'm thankful. All right, you guys. I'll see you next time. I'm not even sure what who is next or when. Um, <laughs> so well, I get home. But anyway, just know that there will be a show. Just don't know when. Yeah. But. I'm guessing early next week. <laughs> All right. All right. Take care.